Smallpox is a virus, is of a family of viruses known as pox viruses. More specifically, smallpox is part of a family of pox viruses known as orthopox. There are many types of pox viruses which infect all different types of animals. There are two principal types of pox viruses, poxes of vertebrates and poxes of insects. All different types of animals get pox viruses. Some types of pox viruses include mousepox, monkeypox, gerbil pox, buffalo pox, seal pox, turkey pox, quail pox, pigeon pox, penguin pox, two types of kangaroo poxes, and even crocodiles get what is called croc pox. There are three types of pox viruses that plague the insect world. These insect pox viruses are the beetle poxes, the butterfly poxes, which include moth poxes, and the poxes of flies. The smallpox virus originally did not infect humans, but about 10,000 years ago, the virus made a trans-species jump from an unknown host animal to humans. The original host animal is still unknown. The scientific name for smallpox is variola, which comes from the Latin varius, which means spotted, or verus, which means pimple. Smallpox is known as variola because one of the symptoms of smallpox are tiny pimples known as postules, which form all over a person's body. Beginning symptoms of smallpox occur only after the incubation period of smallpox, which is two weeks. Beginning symptoms include high fever, backache, headache, and nausea. Once the postules would form, patients would be in agony and feel as though their skin was on fire. There are two forms of variola, variola major and variola minor. Variola major kills between 10 and 30 percent of its victims. Variola minor kills less than 1%. The two types produce similar symptoms, but it is unknown why one is more deadly than the other. Smallpox interacts with a person's immune system in different ways. There are three different ways it can react with a person's immune system. It can form what is called classical smallpox, in which there are two forms. The first form is discrete ordinary smallpox, in which the postules stand out on the skin as separate blisters. The second type is confluent ordinary smallpox, in which the postules merge into one sheet. This form is typically deadly. The third type is hemorrhagic smallpox. Hemorrhagic smallpox is about 100% fatal. The most extreme type is flat hemorrhagic smallpox, in which the skin does not postulate but instead remains flat and smooth. The skin will also darken and appear charred. Bleeding will occur out of the orifices. The whites of the eyes will turn red, and if they survive long enough, they will eventually turn black. Hemorrhagic smallpox is most common in teenagers. Smallpox would often leave its victims disfigured with pox marks and leave 1 in 10 victims blind. Smallpox killed hundreds of millions of people during human history. That's far more than the plague and all the 20th century wars combined. Smallpox is so deadly because it spreads through the air and doesn't kill its victims as quickly as Ebola and the plague. In this way, it has time to spread to a new host. For this reason, in 1965, the World Health Organization started a campaign to eradicate smallpox. They started vaccinating people all over the world in rings around smallpox outbreaks to snuff out the virus. On October 27, 1977, the last naturally occurring case of smallpox occurred. In the summer of 1978, in Birmingham, England, a medical photographer named Janet Parker became sick and died of smallpox. The virus escaped from a lab in a university where a scientist was experimenting with it. That scientist later took his own life. On May 8, 1980, the World Health Organization declared the smallpox virus to be eradicated. This was not the end for the smallpox virus. After its eradication, many countries still had samples of the smallpox virus. After the accident in Birmingham, the World Health Organization encouraged everyone to either send their samples to the CDC in Atlanta or a WH center in Russia, or to destroy their samples. Officially, smallpox only exists in two places, Atlanta and Russia. But in reality, it probably exists in other places. Some countries may have said they destroyed it and didn't, and other countries may have obtained it. The worry isn't that smallpox will escape, it's that it will be used as a weapon. There is already evidence that the Soviet Union experimented with smallpox as a weapon. 
In the 1500s, when the conquistadors came to the Americas, they brought with them a weapon, smallpox. The Native Americans had no defense against it. They had never been exposed to it. Smallpox burned through their population, killing many. Without it, the Spanish never would have been able to conquer the Incas and the Aztecs. We are like the Native Americans. We have not been exposed to smallpox in decades. We have no natural defense against it. A scientist named Ken Alabeck had this to say about bioweapons. I can say I don't believe nuclear weapons work. Nuclear weapons destroy everything. Biological weapons are more beneficial. They don't destroy buildings. They only destroy vital activity. It is not a question of if smallpox will be used as a weapon, but when, and will we be ready?